Good morning. My name is Charles, and I'm on a I'm on a ladder on the top of my shed. So I live kind of rural, as you can tell. You can probably imagine. It's pretty rural. Broadband services have been relatively limited. Even up till recently, most of it was only dial-up, and only over the last few years has broadband come out in the form of copper DSL service. That's what I've had for a while now. So I ordered the Starlink beta kit in February of last year because, well, this seems like a prime opportunity to get much better speeds. Well, then a funny thing happened while I was waiting for my dish. I had fiber installed. Right over there is a fiber terminal, and there's a thin fiber line feeding my house. So now I have 500 meg internet service. Well, what's Starlink going to do compared to that? Luckily, we can answer that because FedEx is on their way with my Starlink dish today. So, being as this is the most opportune place to put it, albeit uh, trying to figure out how to do that without it falling off with the wind, north is that away. That's where it's got a point. It's wide open. Let's see what Starlink can do. All right, so you may notice a couple things. Uh, this isn't the other shed, this is my old shed. So why am I over here? Well, because one of the complaints, I'll call them complaints, that Starlink customers have had is that accessories seem to be more out of stock than even the dishes themselves. And in my case, that's also true. The mount that I need that's gonna come off the side for this dish to mount into is not here yet. In the meantime, there's enough of an overhang down here where I can put this dish down here like so, screw in from the ends, and not have to worry about drilling holes into the ceiling of my other shed. So that's what we're going to do. Zing a couple screws in just to hold it down for the time being so we can play. Now, full disclosure, I have had this set up already yesterday. The video I took, my intro, was actually yesterday when it was warmer. Unfortunately, um, it's not as warm today, but I did test it just running uh, the, the dish right out of the, the main lawn, basically, and I ran the cable in temporarily just to see what kind of speeds I got. So the reason that uh, I played with this yesterday and not today is I took this down to my dad's this morning and we tested it down there to see if perhaps this will be a good idea for their internet down there. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get it to work down there. I think it's just lack of satellite coverage in the area we were in. It was close, not quite. There were a couple of flickers of hope, but I think it's just a coverage issue. But they're not going to be able to pull the trigger for a little while anyway. It was more just to satisfy curiosity. We're going to wait for the weather to turn warm, put it up on its roof instead of out in the lawn, and uh, we'll see if it gets any better. Now, you may notice that this thing's at kind of an angle. Well, the dish is motorized, so it should adjust itself automatically. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the cable. We're basically just going to kind of hook it to here for the time being bridge the gap over to some clamps set over there and uh, see if we can't make this work all right now the interesting neat with this the thing about this connector is it actually has a little strain relief that you can punch in to make it through the hole but it's kind of an ingenious design the connector slides up into here and then locking it into Whichever base you have actually locks your connector into place, which is kind of neat. Now, I couldn't find any zip ties because I'm looking for them, which means I can't find them. But I did find some cable clips. So we're just going to go ahead and nail a couple cable clips into here. Using a hammer that's way overkill. So we're going to do one with the nail on the top, one with the nail on the bottom, so we're basically doubling up just for uh, whatever's sake. Okay, now that's 
plenty of room to hold it tight but not strain it at all. So now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to open our side door, fish the other end into the shed, get the modem plugged in, and uh, we'll get this thing fired up. I am going to grab the camera though. We're going to go take a peek and show you where we're going to eventually route this thing. I should probably take that with me. All right, we are walking and we're walking and we're walking. And now we're in the slushy deep snow. All right, where are we going to go? All right, so... And so we are back on the other side of the shed. Now under here, you can see, maybe you can see this is, so that is the Cat 5E cable coming from the house and it comes along this under railing and then it comes up here. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> I thought I had a lot more room under here than I do. So the plan was that I would have plenty enough room under here to wherever that line was throw a right angle drill under here, drill up in under the wall, fish a fish tape up to where that media panel which is, which is somewhere in here, following that other line. Now I didn't drill a very big hole for the other line, so it's not like I can just feed this along with it. Uh, I do have to find another, I, I bought some stubby drill bits, but even with a right angle and a stubby drill bit, I'm not sure I'm gonna get under there. And right now it's really cold. I'm basically gonna have to kind of lay it down so I can see what I'm doing. Not doing that in this weather, so temporary it is. We're gonna run it just in through the other door under the plastic sheeting in there. There's plenty of flex in the seals on the door that'll let us do that. So let's go push that through the door and uh, go inside where it's warmer. All right, so this is my outside door entrance. Now, if you've seen any of my other shed videos, you'll know that inside, this is all plasticed off. But I do have enough slack underneath the roll of the plastic underneath it that I can actually push this inside into the shed, like so. And then fish all of this into the shed, which is gonna be a lot. Something like that, uh, except that this one's, there we go, bent. All right, that'll work for now temporarily. Eventually we're gonna do this, but on the other side, coming from the top, um, mainly because this is the wrong corner, but it is as it is. All right, something like that. All right, so here's our modem. It's gonna end up setting in here, for the time being at least. But we do have all this excess cord that we'll have to bundle up. But we don't care about aesthetics right now. We want playtime. Okay, modem in, plug it on. All right, now that the dish is installed, everything's tucked away nicely, the question is, who wins this thing? So remember, we are considering 500 meg fiber from my local ISP versus, well, Starlink. So you can probably see some results behind me, but I just ran these a minute ago, but I'm gonna run them again, just so you can see what happens. Now on the right here, this one back here, this is my fiber internet. This is what I'm running on right now. The laptop right now connected to SpaceX Starlink. So, we're gonna run over here, we're gonna put our mouse and our cursor on the go button. And on the count of three, two, one, we go again. And I'm just gonna sit back and watch. Now our fiber jumps out to a massive start, 28 milliseconds latency. Starlink right behind it with 39. But now here's the interesting thing. 205, 6, 7, 207, 197 megabits on Starlink. And if you saw the previous result, we were at 208 before. I've seen as high as 260. Upload speed though, fiber is gonna run away with this one as it is 143, 4, whatever, 145 dot double aught. So I wanna also remind people that I'm running 
my fiber into the house, then through other routers, and then all the way back out here through other cable into these routers. So I've run this speed test inside plenty of times and I'm typically getting more like 300 down and about 200-ish up. So there is definitely some loss from there to here. But Starlink, with a latency of 39, a download of 197, an upload of 12, and I've seen the upload anywhere from 12 to 25, that just kind of seems to vary a lot. Well, it loses, right? Because this is 197 to 207 and 300 inside. The upload speed's 10 times faster. That's obviously a loss. Well, here's the thing. Starlink is not a replacement for fiber. It, it never was intended to be, and it's never going to be, at least not in the foreseeable future. It's supposed to be for people in the middle of nowhere that either have very limited or very non-existent internet access. It's supposed to be able to bring that accessibility to the masses out in the middle of nowhere for education, entertainment, business, all those wonderful things. Well, that's what it's for. It'll easily handle your Zoom calls and your FaceTimes and all the things that you do. Streaming video, you can stream your YouTube videos to your heart content if that's what you do. If you're a live vlogger, whatever, that'll work just fine. 12 megabit upload is nothing to be uh, ashamed about. And a lot of typical broadband companies, a lot of typical DSLs and cables, that's how they run. They run a really high download speed because that's the bulk of the consumption. And the upload speed is a lot lower. Now with fiber, you're working on light, right? So it's not as big a drawback. You can basically send light just as fast in both directions. So on paper, it might look like Starlink has lost this battle. Now, there's a couple of things I want to mention with this. Remember, I have seen speeds up to 260 megabits down. Elon has also tweeted out in the past that he believes that the consumer version of Starlink as it sits now once fully optimized, once the entire constellation of satellites are up, could it be approaching one gigabit download speeds? Well, that's, uh, that's definitely faster than my fiber. Now again, it's not to say that it can't compete with gigabit fiber. Plenty of places in the world have gigabit fiber already. You don't have to wait for 30 more thousand satellites to go up. You don't have to wait for upload speeds to ever increase. So that's kind of a trade-off. So in the end though, why am I comparing these two? Well, the reason is because Starlink is $99 a month. My current pricing on my 500 meg fiber is, is about $100 a month. I don't know if I'm on a promotion. I honestly don't. I've only had fiber for about six months, but I do know that the internet side of my phone bill is about $100-ish. So I'm not comparing them speed for speed to see which one's real, which one's not. I'm comparing the dollar amount. So dollar to dollar, there's very little difference in the download, at least a noticeable one that anybody around is going to see. Because remember, you're not only limited to your device's speeds, but also if you're trying to download from a remote location, you're also limited to the server speeds and the access you have. You could have gigabit fiber, but if you're downloading from a really crappy slow server, your speeds are going to suck anyway. You're not downloading at a gigabit speed, you're downloading at whatever it will let you. I use a lot of file sharing. And I also run a Plex server off my machine in the house, and I want as much bandwidth on the upload side for that Plex server to send video to wherever I happen to be watching it from. Can I do it on 10, 12, 20 meg upload? Probably. Uh, at least right now. Eventually, it might get to the point where either larger file sizes take up more bandwidth, or I may end up with extra users on the account, which also take up more bandwidth the more people are using it at once. So right now, Fiverr's still got a pretty good home, and like I said, it is a little faster in the house, not that it's a big deal. But as far as what Starlink is doing right now, and as far as where I'm at, again, this has only been up for a day. I am really impressed with the speeds that I'm getting. Now, also remember, I'm in the middle of nowhere, with a perfect view of the sky, if I check my obstruction back on my phone, if I check the history on the phone, zero, uh, zero obstructions, uh, zero outages over the last you know, 12, 24 hours, really, I keep checking it every so often and I haven't seen an outage come up yet because I have nothing that could possibly obstruct me. So in the end, is Starlink faster than fiber? Well, it kind of depends on the fiber package because you can get packages as low as 50 megabits per second, 100 and up. Now, five to Starlink, 
it's right on par depending on your losses in the rest of your network. Uh, money for money, that's about the same, but is it faster than a 50 or a 100 meg package? By far, as long as you're looking at the download. The upload side, comparable to every other broadband out there, and really that's going to be great for 95% of the population. Most people don't need that much upload because this is going to be more than plenty for anything you're going to be doing when it's telecommunications or just sending emails, whatever it happens to be, that's going to be fine. Anyway, that's my review. We'll come back and we'll revisit the Starlink thing once I've got the rest of the mounts in place and, and my Ethernet adapter where I can actually get the whole shed kicked over onto, onto a wired connection just to see how that goes. Um, not so much the speed-wise, but the integration. And uh, yeah, we'll come back and we'll revisit this as things get cleaner as we go. We do still have to run the wire into the media panel, for example, so still plenty to do with it. But for now, I'm pretty impressed with it. If you're in an area where you don't have fiber or a, another high-speed broadband that's pushing 100 meg service, it might be something to look at. Anyway, take care. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.